From our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Good evening. A fire has destroyed popular food chain Hungry Jack's in Hobart's northern suburbs overnight. Fire investigators arriving to the premises this morning, praising the efforts of the staff. Their quick thinking got everyone to safety. Arriving at the scene shortly before 8.30 last night, fire crews from across the greater Hobart area were dealt a difficult task. On our arrival, uh, we found the building to be well involved in fire. As members of the public watched on, firefighters worked hard to get the blaze under control. It took two hours. The building completely gutted. It appears that a fire has started from the kitchen uh, and it looks like it may be an accidental fire. While no injuries have been reported, smoke continued to bellow out, causing concerns for nearby residents. It was more so the smoke than anything that we were worried about because it was really thick and black. Given the timing of the fire, which broke out during a busy dinner service, firefighters say it's lucky no one was injured. They've praised the quick efforts of Hungry Jack's workers, who moved swiftly to get everyone from inside to safety. Uh, this is a significant fire and the fact that there are no injuries is largely attributable to the uh, quick thinking of the staff here at Hungry Jack's. The cost of damage coming in at an eye-watering price. At this stage it's probably a little too early to, to uh, give a definitive estimate of damage but we're, we're looking north of five million dollars. In a statement, Hungry Jack says it's assisting Tasmania Fire Service with investigations and the restaurant will remain closed for the foreseeable future. Where possible, staff will be redeployed to the nearby Hobart and South Hobart restaurants. Those nearby relieved no one was hurt. That was a first and it was really scary, but I'm just glad everyone's safe. Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmania News. Workers from the state's health and youth justice sector have walked off the job, continuing the call for desperate government action to address workforce shortages. Union members taking to the streets in the north and south while the health minister spruced his plan to attract interstate staff. This message heard loud and clear. More support, more care. Frontline child safety and youth workers stepping away from desks fighting for more than an intervention package, which Community Services Minister Roger Yinch introduced to significantly boost the struggling workforce. Every child counts! Every child counts! It is not enough. It does not narrow the pay gap and the condition gap, and it's divisive. So we are asking him today to go back to the table and to do better. A package of incentives, including a market allowance, particularly for those uh, on the northwest coast, Unions calling for mental health support, with some workers claiming they've been denied adequate time off. We are failing this really vulnerable portion of our community anyway, because there just aren't enough of us to do the work that needs to be done. It's an all too familiar story for pathology staff at the LGH, protesting a lack of recruitment action of medical scientists, insisting 17 more be hired. These are vital roles to keep the lab laboratories running and to make sure that tests are happening promptly and results are going out to the clinicians quickly. We have a number of uh, currently funded positions that are unfilled, but more than that, activity over the last 12 months has increased by as much as 20%. The health minister insisting his recruitment blitz is proving successful backing an interstate advertising campaign to attract frontline workers, especially to rural areas. 660 uh, more healthcare workers just in the last three and a half months coming to Tasmania, uh, and that's a, a net 170 increase for Tasmania. But whether it answers the calls of the health sector, only time will tell. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Industrial action could also be on the cards for some of our Catholic school educators, with Tasmanian members of the Independent Education Union set to vote over the next week. It follows two years of negotiations on a new enterprise agreement, which would see changes to teacher conditions and payments more in line with staff at government schools. Catholic Education Tasmania says it will continue to provide updates on bargaining and respects the rights of employees to conduct action. The two will meet next week. 
Meantime, the state's classrooms will come alive with experiments with National Science Week underway. It comes as Tasmania continues to score badly in NAPLAN, with more than half of students performing under the minimum standard in literacy and numeracy. Sparking an interest among students. National Science Week kicking off in schools across the state. So much for them to be looking at and we want them to be really excited about the variety of things that come under that banner of science. But I think to just try like one of the level two subjects even, the science subjects. But it's not the wonders of the natural world that has some concern. It's news that our state continues to lag the nation in the basics. These statistics are alarming. They do um, put Tasmania at the back of the pack uh, nationally and it's very clear that uh, Tasmania needs to do more. The latest NAPLAN results showing Tasmanian children are struggling. Our years three, five, seven and nine below the national average in five key areas, including reading, writing and numeracy. Year three grammar and punctuation the biggest worry, with more than half not meeting national minimum standards. These are the reasons why we need an education review and we need to understand from the Minister what's actually going on with this. It's not all bad news. There is slight improvement in average scores for grades 7 and 9 in writing on previous years. But the government concedes more needs to be done. You don't get a change overnight. It's going to take a number of years for us to actually see those programs um, come to fruition and see what those results will bring. At a national level, the opposition says the NAPLAN results show there's a crisis in our schools. The federal minister looking for a better report card. Things like investing in catch-up tutoring. Uh, that means providing extra support for kids who are falling behind by getting them out of the classroom and into a room where there might be one teacher and a couple of kids. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Spirit of Tasmania operator TT Line has disputed evidence presented to a public accounts committee on Monday, with Chairman Michael Granger saying he's looking forward to setting the record straight. While steering clear of specifics, Mr Granger says he will provide factually correct information regarding the delay of the two new vessels. It comes as the state government has today appointed two new infrastructure experts to help address the berth upgrades needed to accommodate the new ships. The next public accounts committee will be held next month. Activist Bob Brown has received a $500 fine and is required to pay court costs after being found guilty of trespass in the Snow Hill Forest in northeast Tasmania two years ago. The magistrate also convicting Karen Weldrick and Christy Alger, with all three protesters maintaining their innocence. The trio say they were protecting the swift parrot and by sentencing them, the Hobart magistrate has issued a death sentence for the critically endangered bird. Bob Brown is expected to appeal. Boat fatalities in the state have plummeted over the last two decades, according to Marine Safety Tasmania. Its latest report indicating there's only been 63 boating deaths since the introduction of mandatory life jackets in 2001. In the 23 years prior to those safety measures ramping up, 146 people lost their lives on the water. It was water. really important at the time, uh, back in 1999-2000, we had about, around about 16 fatalities in one year. And it was then that the government decided that we've got to do something about this. The group says while it's an improvement, even one fatality is too many. Hobart has come alive today with supercars roaring through the streets of the city for the first time. Revheads treated to some supercar action, rubbing shoulders with the stars and cars along the waterfront before gearing up to take on Simmons planes for the annual super sprint. <laughs> Revved up and ready to go. This just a taster of what will take place at Simmons Plains Raceway this weekend. They were really loud and cool. Hundreds of motorsport fans pumped up to celebrate supercar action. With the street close to traffic, only V8s were waved through. Crazy experience, just awesome. Come down and see some of the drivers before we head up on the weekend. Before their favourite drivers get behind the wheel, car fanatics lapping up the chance to get up close and personal, waiting to get signatures and photos with their heroes. The crowd's amazing and so it's good to be back here racing in Tassie. It's a great little circuit, it produces great racing and uh, it's, I'm sure it's going to be a great weekend. Former Supercars champion Mark Winterbottom in hot demand. 
the veteran enjoying the fan fest before he clocks 600 championship races. A bit of a tease to what people can expect on the weekend and yeah, really cool. He's a little disappointed he couldn't unleash all of his pedal power though. It was cool but kind of cruel as well because you want to go fast. There were smiles all round and plenty of pint-sized fans putting their skills to the test. And the fun doesn't stop here. Northern Tasmania will be treated to supercar action tomorrow with meet and greets and signings before the drivers hit the track on Friday. Rebecca Gadineris at 7, Tasmania News. The City of Launceston has started work on a new road safety improvement project in Mulgrave Street. The Council is hoping to improve the intersections with Galvin and Garfield Streets following nine reported crashes over the past five years. This is a bit of a, uh, a run through to Kings Meadow, so it's just a matter of slowing the traffic down to ensure that we don't have intersections where uh, there are some confluence of traffic and pedestrians. And when you consider that by actually changing the structure of the road, We'll make certain that not only does the roads uh, slow the traffic that goes through, but we're actively protecting all those who are vulnerable here. Peter Frazier is campaigning for better road planning across the country after he lost his 23-year-old daughter on the Hume Highway in regional New South Wales. In the face of danger, a group of Tasmanians ran towards trouble and now they're being recognised for their bravery. Split-second decisions to save lives that almost cost them their own. When a car exploded on Melbourne's Burke Street during the 2018 terror attack, Launceston's Rod Patterson ran towards it, the former firefighter thinking somebody would need to be pulled to safety. Instead, he became a target. It was a hell of a shock uh, seeing someone lunge at me with a knife and stab me in the head, I can assure you. After 120 stitches, he's receiving a bravery medal for the traumatic incident. I was too scared to close my eyes because I replayed the incident every time I did. The community of Tasmania, especially Launceston, uh, they just embraced us, put their arms around us, showed their love and support for us. It was a rough day in the water off St Helens in 2014 when Stephen De Bruyne, his dad Peter and nephew Jack were checking cray pots. A boat ran into trouble crossing the bar and without a second thought, the trio raced into the treacherous conditions to assist. I don't recall anyone saying anything. It was no. just, just job needed to be done. There was no one else around. Yeah, off we go. The boat had capsized. The four on board, including three young boys, washed into the ocean. They managed to pluck the boys to safety before they too ran into trouble. I turned back and all we had was this big green wave behind us. So the boats started to ride up the wave at this point. We've got to the crest of the wave, the boat's gone sideways and I thought we were done for all money. The prop's gone in the water and it just pulled us off the back of the wave. Jack was just 11 at the time. It was pretty full on. I, I do remember it pretty, pretty vividly. Um, but I probably didn't grasp the situation for what it was at the time. The man couldn't be saved, but the three boys are alive thanks to the heroics. Steve and Peter and Jack are now being honoured with a group bravery citation. It doesn't really mean much to us. You know, we didn't expect anything to come from it. You know, yeah. we just did it because we were there and need to be done. You do it because it was the right thing to do. And you would hope someone else in that situation would do the same. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. The first coaches of Tasmania's new AFL Senior Talent Academy have been locked in. Current under-18 Devils coach Jeremy Webley will lead the men in his first senior role since he was playing coach at Clarence. He's looking forward to helping build the academy up and keep as much talent here as possible. It's an opportunity for the players within our state to remain in our state, to participate um, through this program to, that sets them up for season 2026 to go full-time into the VFL. He'll work alongside former under-18 women's coach Jodie Clifford. It's a big weekend in the NWFL with the Junior Boys Grand Finals at Wynyard on Sunday. The under-16s play a rematch of last year's decider between Penguin and Devonport, while in the second year back, Circular Heads play Olveston in the under-12s and Bernie under-14s play Latrobe after going to extra time in their semi-final. Tassie women's coach Jude Coleman's excited about the lead in the inaugural spring T20 challenge will give the Hurricanes in October as they look for a maiden WBBL title. I think last year we had two games of T20 cricket leading into the WBBL and this year some of our key players will have played up to 15 games of T20 cricket so from a coach point of view that's really exciting. 
After winning top pick in the upcoming WBBL draft, June says she'll be jumping on the best batter to fill a spot in the upper order. Meanwhile in Darwin, 71 from Tim Ward set up the Tigers nicely against the Renegades in the top end T20. Tassie making it to 139 after their 20 overs. An early wicket from Kieran Elliott was a promising start to Melbourne's inning. Navethan at Radhakrishnan returning later with two scalps in three balls to slow down the chase. Two more wickets would fall but Melbourne made the target with ease a few moments ago with four overs to spare. Entering the pointy end of the supercar season, Mark Winterbottom is about to set a milestone at Simmons Plains that might not ever be matched. He'll notch up his 600th consecutive race start, having not missed one since June 2005. Race stats and that's normally race wins and podiums and stuff like that. It's a cool stat. It means you've been in the sport a long time and there's no guarantees, you know, you've got young guys coming in the sport. He arrived in Hobart this morning on the same flight as Kiwi rookie Ryan Wood, who was just 18 months old the last time Frosty missed a race. Feels like it's been about that long since you missed a bulletin, Murph. When's your next day off? Oh, mate, I just, I'm just a sucker for punishment. I just work day and night. Uh, thanks for that, mate. Uh, Kaya Wicks will join us after the break with the weather forecast. Will we still have this warm weather tomorrow? We'll find out. Good evening. Hobart 19, a little cooler in Launceston. 16 the top, 15 for Devonport and 17 for Burnie. Friendly Beaches, Grove and Ouse 19, the Islands and St Helens 18. Smithton 17, 16 for Strawn and Lyweeny just 11. A cloud band moved over the state this morning, bringing showers to most parts with little about the east. A band of cloud is moving well to the east of Tasmania with scattered low cloud persisting across the state. We can expect a broad area of low pressure over the bight moving towards the west coast of the state tomorrow. West to northwesterly winds 5 to 15 knots about the south and east. Winds tending east to northeasterly 10 to 20 knots during the afternoon with westerly swells at 3 metres. We also have a strong wind warning for the far northwest coast tomorrow. Late showers in Hobart, 16. Showers increasing in Signet, 15. And much the same for New Norfolk with 18 there. 18 and increasing showers also for Launceston. Similar conditions in Devonport, 16. And a couple of showers are on the way for Campbelltown, 17's the top. Rain, rain and more rain for the west. Burnie, 15. 17 for Strawn and 16, the maximum for Smithton. Possible showers for both St Helens and Swansea, 17. Soggy conditions also for Fingal with 18 degrees. To the all-important weekend forecast now, showers highly likely on Friday, more so about the northwest. Those showers continue into Saturday, although less frequent about the north, and very little change on Sunday with light showers forecast, yet temperatures plummet plummeting to as little as 12 degrees across some parts of the state. Quite the contrast tomorrow in Darwin and Broome, aiming for a top of 32. Partly cloudy in Melbourne, Canberra and Sydney, rain developing in Adelaide with 24 degrees. Hobart, partly cloudy, 14 degrees, also partly cloudy in Launceston and in Devonport with 11. Murph, it's been great hanging out with you for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, well, thanks, Car. It's been a blast. I have heard that Kim Miller is fully rested and is champing at the bit to join you tomorrow night. Until then, good night. <laughs>